Okay, so now let's try to do uh, some similar stuff with uh, public key cryptography. Um, just a reminder, you know, the notation here, the curly brackets represent public key operations. The square brackets are private key operations. Who can do public key operations? The public. Anybody. Who can do private key operations? Only the one that has the private key. Okay. Uh, they're inverse operations. They undo each other. Okay. Um, okay, now, I'm Alice, okay, so Alice claims I'm Alice. What's going to prove to Bob that this is really Alice, if you're in this public key situation? What does Alice know that nobody else knows? She knows her private key, so somehow or another you have to get that person on the other end to use Alice's private key, and you have to be able to verify that they used it. That's what's going to convince you that it's really Alice. Okay, so here's a simple way to do that. Bob could take a random challenge, encrypt it with Alice's public key, and what's Alice going to send back here? Just R. Okay, because if the person on the other end can send back R, what do they have to know? They have to know Alice's private key, and it's not a replay because you chose that random value for this particular iteration of the protocol. Really simple, right? Okay, now. So it works, it authenticates Alice. Bob can be convinced he's talking to Alice. What about Alice? She knows she's talking to Bob here? Well, why not? It's encrypted. Using the public key. Okay, it's encrypted with a public key. Anybody could do that. Again, if you put Trudy over here who doesn't know anything, she could do everything that Bob's doing. So we don't authenticate the server in that case. Now here's another thing to think about. Um, uh, Put Trudy over here for a minute, okay? Now Trudy's supposed to send a random value uh, encrypted with, you know, Alice's public key. Well, she's Trudy. She doesn't have to follow the rules, right? So suppose Trudy finds something laying around <laughs> that looks like this. <laughs> suppose, okay, suppose Trudy finds something like this. <laughs> Can you read that? No. Too bad. Okay. So, <laughs> this is uh, some message encrypted with Alice's public key. Now, if people want to encrypt a message for Alice, what do they do? They get Alice's public key, they generate a message, they encrypt it, they send it to Alice. That's ciphertext, right? Everybody gets to see ciphertext. So Trudy gets to see ciphertext. So she gets this ciphertext. And now, instead of sending some random value here, she sends the message encrypted with Alice's public key. What does Alice send back? The message. the message. That is the best cryptanalysis in the world. You don't even have to do any work. You just send them the encrypted message and they send you back the plain text. Okay. So there's a potential problem here. Um, and that you shouldn't be, you should not, you should, the way to get around this would be to have two key pairs. A one that you used in the protocols and one that you used for encryption and stuff like that. And never mix the two. And a lot of systems do that. They have two different public key pairs. Well, okay, if this works, uh, here's maybe just a slight variation on this. Instead of sending an encrypted value, Bob could just send it a nonce. And then what would Alice do to prove that she has the private key? Sign it. Okay, and Bob can verify that, right? Because what would Bob do to verify this? Apply the public key and make sure he gets on. Okay, that would tell him that's correct. Okay, so from actually from Alice's perspective, this is exactly the same protocol. She takes whatever shows up, she applies her private key to it, and sends the result, right? From Bob's perspective, it's a little bit different. Just where does he use the public key? Does he use it here or here? But basically the same protocol. Okay, now, thinking of this problem here, are there any potential issues here? Couldn't you just substitute R for X? Uh, well, yeah, okay, you can get, Trudy, you can get Alice to sign anything, right? Instead of sending a random value, send a message that says, I agree to give Trudy a million dollars. Signed Alice, and Alice signs it and sends it back, right? Okay. So again, this is the issue. You really should have two different uh, key pairs. There are actually some protocols 
um, that just use a single key pair, but they have all these tricks built in to make sure this doesn't happen. You know, that you can't make this sort of mistake. But easier to just have two two key pairs, and, and that's all this is saying. So don't use the same key pair for everything. Just have two. It's no really not a big deal to have two key pairs as opposed to one. Okay. Uh, okay. So authentication, we kind of got that down. We can do that with symmetric keys. We can do that with public keys. The next thing we need is a session key. Once we're done with the authentication, we want to then encrypt and integrity protect the messages that follow. Okay? So we want to have a key to do that. We want to get that key as part of the authentication. When we're done authenticating, we want the key. We want to be ready to go. OK. Okay, so how should we do this? How should we get the uh, session key uh, established? Okay, now, when we look at protocol, protocols, you have to look at whether, the, whether you can break the authentication. Okay, in other words, you could, whether you can force a mistake in the authentication. Can you put Trudy here for Alice? Convince Bob that it's really Alice? Can you put Trudy here? Convince Alice that it's really Bob? Okay, now with the session key, we've also got to worry about the key. Is the key secure? You don't want Trudy to be able to get the session key. Okay, that would break the protocol as well. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first uh, session key thing. I'm Alice. Here's a challenge to you, Bob. Let's suppose Bob in his protocol is supposed to encrypt and its public keys. Encrypt those two with Alice's public key. So what's the session key here? What's the session key? Uh, not a trick question. K. 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 K is a session key. Meaning once they're done with this, they're going to encrypt their messages now with the key K. Where did the key K come from? Bob just made it up. Okay, he randomly generated a key and threw it in there. Okay, he sent it to, uh, got that. Okay, so he's just making a key that they can use for this particular session. Next time they authenticate, they'll get a different session key. Okay, so you can generate a nonce. It can generate a session key too, right? Okay, so who's authenticated here? Okay, if you're Alice, do you believe it's Bob there? Why not? You guys are just not very trusting, right? <laughs> well, put Trudy there. Could Trudy do this? Yeah, it's a public key operation. Trudy can generate, you know, can take the random number, generate another random number, put it in there, and send it. So there's no authentication of the server. How about Bob? Does he know this is Alice? Okay, what convinces Bob that this is Alice? Well, he takes this message when it shows up, uses his private key, he sees these, and what tells him it's Alice? Why would that convince him it's Alice? Otherwise, he wouldn't change that. You have to, somehow Alice had to use her private key. Where did she have to use her private key? Right here to get K, okay? She had to use her private key to get K. So it's actually K coming back here that convinces Bob it really is Alice. Well, you say, what about R plus one? That's kind of subtle, okay? And you 265 students better think about it, okay? Uh, that actually doesn't prove anything, okay? Alice shows up, and it doesn't tell you anything, okay? So, but K does. So it's kind of weird. K is sort of acting like the nonce here and the session key, but that's okay. It seems to work. Why is it important to be on What? Why is R plus 1 important? Why, why not just uh, In this case, it's not. <laughs> I just want to throw you a little curve. <laughs> no, actually, we'll see stuff like this in the protocols we talk about, so I just wanted to... It's building up to something. You, you'll see. Okay, so uh, we do authenticate Alice. Uh, okay, and when, since we have a session key, you should also ask yourself, is the session key secure? Can Trudy get the session key? Well, the crypto is strong, right? We assume that. It's encrypted. Trudy can't get it here. It's encrypted. Trudy can't <coughs> get it. it looks good. Trudy cannot get the session key. So we're good to go there. So we don't authenticate the Bob. We do authenticate Alice. Session key is good. The nonce really doesn't serve any purpose here. It's just kind of a red herring. Okay. 
Okay, so we did this with uh, uh, encryption. How about if we try signatures? Let's try that. Okay, so I'm Alice, here's a challenge, and Bob signs. So he generates a session key, signs R and K, just like before, Alice sends back R plus one and K, but signed this time. Okay, now Alice, is Alice convinced this is Bob? Yeah, actually, because what? She can use Bob's public key here, and what does she see? She sees K, and that convinces her it's Bob, right? <coughs> she doesn't know K, right? She doesn't know what K is, so K doesn't tell her anything. But what R does tell her, because she knows what R is, right? So when she sees R, she says, okay, that must be Bob, because that person had to use Bob's public key, the private key, and it's not a replay. Hey, what about this? Does this convince Bob that it's really Alice? Yeah. It's actually, yeah, it's same logic, okay. K comes back, okay, and when K comes back, Bob knows what it's supposed to be. You can use Alice's public key here. It's current, it's not a replay because he chose K at random. So you actually do get mutual authentication here. So it's a great protocol, right? Oh yeah, the session key. There's this thing about the session key, right? Okay, anybody can get the session key, right? Because all they have to use is a public key and they can get the session key. Okay. But, you know, at least we got the mutual authentication. Previous one, we had a secure session key. So can we somehow combine those guys and get the best of all the people? Okay, so can we combine these results? And can we sort of combine the two protocols and get, you know, mutual authentication and a secure session key? Well, why not? Okay, so I'm Alice, and what we're going to do is we're going to sign, like we did on the previous protocol, and then encrypt that result so that Trudy cannot see what the session key is. Okay, just like on the previous slide, we'll sign this result uh, and then we'll encrypt so Trudy cannot see the session key. Well, oh, that's kind of complicated. <laughs> so what do you think? Is this going to work? Well, look, if the previous one gave us mutual authentication, this still has to give us mutual authentication, right? Because we're doing the same thing we relied on there for mutual authentication. So that parts the authentication. If the previous one gave us a secure session key, this one does too, because nobody can decrypt this and get the key tag. There you go. Nice protocol. Okay, so it gives us everything we're looking for. Okay, just for fun. <laughs> fun for me, I don't know about for you. Fun for me is we will, uh, how about if we turn these around? Suppose we do the encryption on the inside and the signature on the outside. Is that going to work? Is that going to change anything? In other words, here we have sign and then encrypt, right? Suppose we first encrypt and then we sign. Well, same protocol except we just switch around those brackets. What do you think about this? Kind of gun shy out there, huh? Not really willing to take a risk. Well, you know, if the signature proved it, you know, that it was Bob before, it's going to prove this Bob here because you're signing, you know, you have to do an extra step to verify, but you're still signing basically the same thing. And same thing down here. If that yeah. signature proved it before, it would still prove it. And the key. The key is secure because nobody can break this encryption. But you might say, you know, this looks a little iffy, right? Because anybody could do what here? Anybody can undo this outside part and just get the inside, right? Or undo that and just get the inside. Aren't they just getting really close to getting the key K? Well, not really, because we assume the cryptography is strong, right? <laughs> so if they can break the cryptography here, they could have broke it on the previous slide and got them too, right? So really, it works either way here, right? Okay, so we can encrypt and sign, or we can sign and encrypt, and it works in either case.